All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we've sat down and done a big, chunky game collection video where I showcase every game that I own for a particular console. And I figured, let's do one for the PlayStation 4. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I have in the past. Instead of sitting down here and holding up game boxes, um, we're actually going to do it by looking through the PSN store because a lot of the PS4 games that I own are actually only on the PSN, like, available digitally. So I figured... It's got a nice interface. Why don't we just sit down and look through the store? So this is how we're going to do it. Hope you guys don't mind this format, but I think it will work fairly well um, in terms of being able to showcase all the games that I have nice and neatly makes it easier for you to see what games I have as well, as well as seeing the cover and maybe sometimes we'll pop in and look at the trailer a little bit. But I've organized it here by alphabetical order. There's a lot of games to go through here. Something you need to know, I'm not going to go over every game because a lot of these are actually just... Um, games that were uh, added randomly from you know having PlayStation Plus. Some of them are like I just added because it was a PlayStation Now game, but that's only a small handful. Some of them are just apparently random demos that I had, but there's not many of those either. I'll be sure to point this out, but uh, there's a ton of full games on here. And I'm going to give little tidbits on each game, kind of give some uh, mini impressions or review or anything that I feel needs to be mentioned for the said game. So we got a lot to go through here. What do you say we jump in? Uh, organized alphabetically. Um, we're just going to go from top to bottom. There's also a few PS5 games on here because I am doing this on my PlayStation 5. All right, so first up is Abzu. Obviously, you know, in the same realm as a journey type game. Very good game. Really enjoyed Abzu in terms of, uh, you know, sort of being a glorified walking simulator i guess when it comes to the genre or in this case swimming simulator but it was a fantastic game that i highly recommend if you're a fan of games like journey ace of seafood it's uh it's as wacky as you think it is here let me let me just show you real quick uh this one deserves showing you the the trailer that'll automatically load up here so this is a very arcade style it feels very dreamcasty uh game where you play as sea life and you shoot lasers and uh, bullets and all kinds of crazy stuff as you play as fish, shrimp, crabs. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's as insane as it looks, and I highly recommend you try it out if you haven't. Agony. I don't remember disliking this game. I also don't remember loving this game. I kind of like some of the atmosphere, but the gameplay was kind of not that great. Alien Isolation, absolutely anxiety-inducing. Uh, I couldn't get through this game. This is back when horror games were still causing me a lot of, like anxiety when it came to playing super scary games and yeah i had to give up on this one not only because it was very long but because man this game is stressful all-star fruit racing uh this was okay from what i remember it's just a fairly colorful uh fun you know it's got some good controls it's just a overall pretty solid kart racer nothing crazy about that one though Apescape 2. This is the PS2 on PS4 Classics. Uh, believe it or not, this is the first and still the only Ape Escape game outside of a couple of the weird spin-offs that only came out in Japan on the PS2. Uh, but the first and still only mainline Ape Escape game that I've played in the series and I had some fun with that. But yeah, I never really fully got into the series. Another Dawn. Avoid at all costs unless you're looking to have a fun time kind of laughing and talking with your friends. Uh, this one is a very, very janky and bad sort of Far Cry first person shooter clone. Uh, I streamed this and had an absolute blast streaming it. We got so many laughs out of this game, but yes, avoid it at all costs. Animagate, haven't played that yet. Amplitude, a phenomenal... Um, a phenomenal remake or, you know, reimagining of Amplitude for um, a new generation. This is the PS4 version of it, obviously. And, uh, wow, some some really fun songs on here. Uh, I'm more of a fan of the original Frequency, but, man, this is a great music rhythm game. Highly recommend it if you've never tried it before. Amnesia Rebirth, this was sort of disappointing compared to the original Amnesia. However, it still had me on the absolute edge of my seat when I didn't quite know what to expect in the beginning of the game. Uh, very scary at times, but... Uh, at the end of the day, the first Amnesia is still one of the best horror games ever, and this one kind of is a not-so-great coming back to the series, in my opinion, but uh, fun enough to still give it a try. Uh, Apex, I played that for like a week or two. Pretty fun, but, you know, these days I find it kind of hard to commit to first-person shooters. This controls very poorly uh, on the PlayStation 4 with a controller. This is definitely a game that was ported from PC to console, and the controls definitely suffer, so I'd... Uh, proceed with caution with this game. I only tried it for a few minutes because it was really hard to control. 
Ark of Alchemist, also known as one of the hardest, uh, well, not one of the hardest, one of the worst reviewed games on the PlayStation 4. And um, while I don't think it's quite deserving of that distinction, I had some fun with it. It has some great music. It's a pretty straightforward action RPG with a, um, a fairly emotional sort of tug on your heartstrings kind of somewhat depressing story is it worth playing if you're into anime games uh, only if you're you know running out of things to try then i'd recommend maybe giving this a, a shot at some point arcania recently bought this on sale or actually it's on playstation now apparently um, but I only paid a couple dollars for it arise a simple story this is a very heartfelt heartwarming um adventure game very light on the gameplay it's just got some light platforming but it's a very tug at the heartstrings kind of story i highly recommend this if you're also a fan of games like abzu journey uh rhyme you know along those lines battle of wonderworld obviously the best game ever created i'm just kidding of course uh, i actually have a whole video that i did on this a couple weeks back so if you're interested in my full impressions on battle of wonderworld please check that video but in the end i uh, i do enjoy this game it is quite a good game in my opinion Awakening of Cthulhu. Sometimes I take a shot and I buy these games that are really, really cheap. This game was like a buck or two. It's terrible. It, this is one of the worst games I ever played. I'm honestly not even sure how people think it's a good idea to release these types of games, but let me show you the, the trailer here real quick uh, and show you how I was fooled. Because the trailer actually makes this look like a fairly competent uh, little... Well, I, I was hoping it would autoplay. There we go. A fairly competent little sort of Metroidvania game with Lovecraftian elements. But uh, it's it's pretty much an unfinished game. And um, by the trailer, it takes a while to get going. Yeah, I was fooled. Uh, it's, it's like a five-minute game. You can beat this game in about five minutes. And I do, do not recommend it. But I, I still have fun playing these terrible little games you could pick up for a few dollars. One of the best 3D platformers I have played in the past decade. Asher's Playroom is essential for a PlayStation 5. Uh, this is from the creator of Lizard Lady vs. the Cats, which is why I picked it up. I think it was about 50 cents. Um, yeah, don't don't play the Ascend Shaft. It's just a weird little too-many game compilation. Arog, this was very interesting. Um, I forget the history on this one. Let me actually see what the, uh, what the, the roots were for this. Uh, let's see here. Um, it was a certain... Okay, well, they don't say it in their description, but this is sort of in a, um, it's based on, like, some kind of a religion or something along those lines. I forget what the exact, um, story was behind this game, but it's about a 30-minute game. Very, very highly recommended if you're into short 30-minute indie games that sort of tell a story that is up for interpretation. And then after you finish the game, if you like to sort of research what you just played in terms of how it relates to a sort of life and death theme, um, I would recommend it. It's a pretty cheap game. I had some fun with that. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. This is the newly remastered version that was just released for current gen or rather past gen PS4. Um, it looks really good. Nice widescreen, uh, up resed. It looks great. It's kind of nice to relive this. I think it's a little overpriced currently, but still, I was a big fan of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the PS2 originally, so it's kind of nice to play that again. Um, this was a kind of neat VR game for Batman. Uh, Battlezone was really fun on PSVR when I was playing that. Beast Quest, very janky, kids kind of JRPG. It does have turn-based combat. I do not recommend this unless you're looking to play something a little different. Or, you know, you can get the game for five bucks, which I'm pretty sure you can. Bless Unleashed, which was a free-to-play MMO that I played for a couple days. Um, it was okay. You know, not, not a terrible game. Some of the combat was quite fast-paced and fun, but nothing, uh, nothing insane and out of this world. Bug Snacks. I played this on the release of the PS5, and um, I don't know. I picked it up, enjoyed it, put it down pretty quickly, though, because I wanted to experience some of the other more next-gen feeling games for the launch of the PS5. Bubsy, The Woolly Strike Back. Um, this is actually a okay 2D platformer. It's a terrible Bubsy game. <laughs> I, uh, I know that might be hard to comprehend for some of you. It's a terrible Bubsy game. I kind of don't like what they did to Bubsy by just placing him in like unused assets from Project Gianna Sisters, which is essentially what this game engine is. Uh, but it's an okay fast paced speedrun style platformer, but it's, uh, it's a slap in the face to Bubsy fans. I do have Bound, still have not played it. Um, I picked this up, I guess, while it was still on PlayStation Plus. I'll get around to that someday. I want to play it in VR. Uh, absolutely a huge fan of Blue Reflection. This is a high recommendation for me. This is a phenomenal 
um, anime JRPG in the same style of a Persona 4, Persona 5 style game. Very light on that element, but it does have the school aspect of talking and developing bonds. Amazing soundtrack. Really love the music in Blue Reflection. It's got a very pastel, lighthearted look to the entire game. Um, also, it's a little simplistic. It's, it's a little easy. However, the combat and the visuals in this game are uh, just really good, in my opinion. And the story is... Uh, also very heartwarming. It's I, I really, really like the main characters. Um, I, I really felt <laughs> as deep of a connection as I can feel to anime girls in high school, okay? But what I'm trying to say is their story is um, worth taking a trip through, and it's also not that long of a JRPG. Bloodborne, um, it's a fine game. I mean, I never fully got into Bloodborne as much as some people, but uh, it was pretty fun for what it was. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm kind of falling out with the Souls games because they started releasing too many too fast, and this was sort of the final nail in the coffin until the PS5 version of Demon's Souls, which sort of brought me back around to it again. But I was on pretty much a break ever since Bloodborne. Great game, just kind of falling out of love with that style of genre uh, in the past several years. Uh, I tried this out because I'm like, you know what, let's try and let's give a shot to this, right? I haven't played a Call of Duty game since Modern Warfare 2. I played this for about 30 minutes, played the tutorial, played an online match, got absolutely destroyed because my reflexes for these games are not the same as what they once were. And that was about my journey with Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Warzone, or Warfare, whatever the heck, Modern Warfare. But it says Warzone, so I'm not sure why it says Modern Warfare. <laughs> I guess that's maybe something that came with, I don't know. Candleman, another really fun uh, artsy fartsy little game where you play as a candle it's sort of a top-down isometric perspective very fun uh, a little overly long from what i can remember but if you're into minimalistic platformers with light puzzle elements highly recommended uh, coffin dodgers absolutely terrible kart racing game where you play as old people in scooters and and such uh it's um it's bad. I mean, some games I can really love because it's one of those cases of it's so bad, it's actually good kind of thing. This game is so bad that it's bad. There are no redeeming qualities about Coffin Dodgers. And as you can see here, yes, you are indeed playing as old people and their weapons are sticks and canes and golf clubs that you hit other kart racers with. Um, don't try it. Believe me. Trust me. Okay. Save your money. It's terrible. Concrete Genie. Uh, Really had a lot of fun with this one. I didn't play any of the VR modes, but as a platformer adventure game, really enjoyed the story in this absolutely stunningly beautiful game. I also enjoyed the story of sort of a coming of age or uh, a kid dealing with a lot of social anxiety with his friends and kind of coming around to that. And it did start to get a little long-winded towards the end, but a, an absolutely phenomenal game. If you have not played this on PS4 yet, it's another high recommendation. Contrast, haven't played that. Darius Collection... Darius Cosmic Collection, what amazing collection, actually, um, that I, I really enjoyed, and a lot of these games I was playing for the first time, but uh, this is a great collection, playing these games in a nice widescreen TV, wow, do they look good, <laughs> like, ooh, man, uh, the super ultra widescreen for some of these games looks so good. Crystal Rift is a pretty okay uh, PSVR dungeon crawler um, that I had some fun with when I was still on my honeymoon phase with the PSVR. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Uh, this, I never really played too much Crash Team Racing back in the day. I was more of a Mario Kart person. So this I enjoyed, but I felt like I was definitely too behind the curve to keep up with people online that had been playing this for pretty much their whole lives. But it was a lot of fun while I had some time with it. This is just the demo. I never ended up picking up the full game of Crash 4. Cosmic Star Heroin. For fans of games like Chrono Trigger, um, fairly short, really nice looking, great soundtrack, a little simplistic, not too difficult from what I remember, but if you're into sort of like a sci-fi twist on a uh, Chrono Trigger style combat system, highly recommend Cosmic Star Heroin. Dark Cloud, wow, um, yeah, one of my favorite games ever, um, definitely one of my favorite PS2 games of all time, I've done a lot of speedruns of this game, um, I can beat Dark Cloud in under 10 hours in one sitting at this point. Uh, for the speedrun. I love Dark Cloud. It's an absolutely essential game if you've never tried it and you're a fan of roguelike dungeon crawlers. Uh, not much to be said. I'm more of a, a fan of the first game over the second game, and you should definitely try the PS2, PS4 classic version, which is what this here. Uh, Day of the Tentacle, I think that was just a PlayStation Plus ad. That's a PS Plus ad. Death Stranding, I was really enjoying this. Um, however, I was streaming it, and I felt this was a little bit long-winded for a stream setting. It was a little hard to keep up with this from stream to stream to stream, because it is a very long game. 
but uh, I, from what I played of Death Stranding, which was, um, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 hours or so, I highly enjoyed and hope to get back to it one day when they release the inevitable PS5 Definitive Edition at some point. Demon Souls PS5 version looks amazing. It's Demon Souls. I had a lot of fun jumping back into this universe. I played Demon Souls when it first released and thought this was a fantastic recreation of the game by Bluepoint for the PS5 launch. Doraemon Story of Seasons. Um, this looks beautiful. So it's from, you know, Craters of Harvest Moon. And uh, it looks phenomenal, but I felt like the character interaction was a little dry and wasn't interesting enough to keep driving me forward. Don't even think. I think this was, uh, no pun intended, I think this was a weird game with a werewolf, like, Battle Royale game or something. I don't know, some silly game. Uh, the City of Final Fantasy NT, I think this was just a demo I played, if I remember right. I never really got into the City too much past the original PSP game. Destruction All-Stars. Uh, really had a lot of fun with this great PlayStation Plus game for those of you that are awaiting your PS5s. I, I highly recommend you pick this up while there's still an online presence and an online community for this game. Best way I can sum it up is it's like Twisted Metal meets Destruction Derby. It's like 70% Destruction Derby, 30% Twisted Metal. Um, actually, maybe a little 10% of, you know, some light platforming too. It's it's a lot of fun. I know the sort of Fortnite-y visual style is a big turnoff for, pe for people, but please try Destruction All-Stars. I absolutely love this game for, uh, you know, the week that I was playing it. Destiny Connect TikTok Travelers highly, highly recommend this game if you are a fan of very cutesy, um, earthbound in style modern JRPGs. Uh, it's a very short game. You can actually beat this in a weekend if you wanted to. It takes as little as 12 hours to beat if you kind of, you know, don't do everything in the game. No more than 20 hours, I think, if you're trying to do everything. Um, really, really fun job combat system where you actually play as uh, a robot and he can get all different kinds of jobs. Oh, I can't go to the product page. Interesting. Uh, he, he can get all different types of jobs and, um, just a very lighthearted story. The story is not the greatest, but uh, amazing music, really, really fun cartoony visuals. One of my highest RPG recommendations on the PS4. Uh, that was just a demo, Dragon Quest XI. Uh, really had a good time with Dragon Quest XI. I do hope to get back to it at some point, maybe with the um, the version that is now available where they have the fully orchestrated soundtrack, because I was not a big fan of the music in Dragon Quest XI, and if I'm going to be honest with you, that's one of the reasons why I stopped playing it, because the music was just kind of... Music is a big component for me in RPGs, and I just wasn't completely feeling the music in Dragon Quest XI's religion, original release, but everything else was quite good. Still need to get around the Dragon's Dog, but never played the series, so I do have this ready to go at some point. I got that on sale. Drawn to Death, another game that was a PlayStation Plus ad. Dreams, one of my highest recommendations on the PS4. Definitely one of the top 10 PS4 games I have played, if I do say so. Uh, this is an essential game if you're a PS4 owner or a PS5 owner for that point. Um, it's pretty much, you know, think Little Big Planet escalated to the next level. When they first came out with the concept for Dreams, and they were like, yeah, you can build any kind of game you want, and other people can play it. It sounded too ambitious, but I, I think they completely delivered on what they set out to do. I regularly come back and play Dreams every few months and stream some of it, and I'm always astounded by the amount of progress made in Dreams and in people's games. I mean, there are full-fledged games in Dreams that could be standalone games, and I would pay money for them, you know, 10, 15. Some of these games I'd pay 20 bucks for easily, and they're right there in dreams if you've not played dreams please 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 buy and play this game while the community is still somewhat active it's an experience unlike any other erica uh i do recommend this game if you're it's a live action game um and if you're into those kind of games where you choose your own adventure style you know there's a lot of these games popping up these days but this is one that i had a lot of fun with uh, i did play it in a stream setting though so kind of having an audience and helping them uh, having them help me make decisions definitely had an impact on my enjoyability of this game. But I still recommend it if you're a fan of live action, choose your own adventure style games. Entwined, I don't really remember my memories with this one too much. I just remember kind of being, uh, just having an okay experience with it. Sort of like a twin stick control to ethereal birds with each stick kind of like lining them up and matching things as you go down tunnels. It was okay. Uh, Earth Defense Force 4.1. I mean, it's Earth Defense Force. You know exactly what you're getting into with these. I played this online a bit with some friends and had some fun with it. Eagle Flight was a pretty okay uh, launch game for the PSVR. It did give me motion sickness, though. This one was one of the harder games to play in, in VR. Dungeon Punks, that's just a PS Plus game. Eternal Ring. So something important to know about Eternal Ring. First of all, this is a 
from software game. This was a launch game on the PS2. This is the PS4 port for it. But the thing that you need to know is if you have played Eternal Ring in the past, this version of the game is actually updated. This is one of the few games to ever receive a sort of retooling for the PS4 release. If you've played the PS2 original, um, you would know that the controls are very cumbersome with it. It doesn't have analog control, so you're like looking around with shoulder buttons and everything. This version of the game remaps the controls to play more like you would expect with dual analog controls, and it plays really, really nicely. Um, I've played, you know, enough of this game to enjoy it enough to want to speedrun it, and I'm a pretty big Eternal Ring fan, and especially if you're a fan of Kingsfield, or if you want to see what From Software's early works were like, I would definitely recommend you check this out. Eternity, The Last Unicorn. Uh, let me see if they let me show you some gameplay for this one. Um, this is a very oddball little action hack and slash game that was okay the trailer i think makes it look way better than it actually is but this is eternity the last unicorn it has a very ps2 vibe to it so if you're into sort of like ps2 era um action hack and slash or late rpg type games uh, i'd recommend maybe checking this one out if you can get it on sale it's uh it's a little janky that is for sure but it's got that nice bygone era kind of feel to it so check it out if you can get it on sale it's not as bad as you may think it is uh, Etherborn, and this was a very fun and artsy um, platformer, like light platformer puzzle solving game. It has a very, very pastel sort of uh, almost eco aesthetic to it at times, um, where the point of this game is you're sort of flipping the world upside down and like walking on the sides of of buildings and, and bridges and such, and you're just trying to navigate from point A to point B essentially. But it does a very nice job of kind of um, making it feel like an adventure game without the puzzles being too in your face. And yeah, pretty pretty decent artsy puzzle game. I tried this one out many, many years ago. I got kind of bored of it in a stream setting. I don't think this is a good game to stream for an audience. Everybody's gone to Rapture. Had an interesting mechanic with... Uh, isn't this the game that uses like the eyeball blinking mechanic or something? Anyway, it was, it was okay. Uh... Exist Archive. I played a very little bit of this long ago, sort of like a Valkyrie profile type RPG. Farpoint, one of the last PSVR games that I played before I moved on from playing PSVR because I was, you know, I was prone to motion sickness and I was kind of getting tired of feeling that sensation. So one of these days I will get back to VR and um, we'll be ready to jump right back into that for sure. Um, Fallout 4, uh, this is a game that I was heavily, heavily enjoying for the first two days I played it, but then suddenly I just dropped it. Like, I was totally in the Fallout 4, and then just dropped it like a rock. Maybe one of these days I'll come back to the Fallout series, but uh, I think that was kind of my sign to to move on and, and give it some time before I try and play more Fallout. Fall Guys, absolutely love this game. For the first couple of days it was out, I was actually doing really, really well in terms of crown wins in this. I had like 30 wins in my first day or two playing this game. I haven't played it in a really long time, but I loved it. I think it's worth the hype. I mean, this game was unlike anything before, right? A platformer battle royale, and I really hope that we continue to see more games that jump outside of the shooter genre for the battle royale genre. Extinction, super janky sort of Attack on Titan kind of uh, vibe from this one. It's um, not good. You can get this game for a few bucks, even physically, I think, and for that, I'd say it's worth a try. But if it's like Dynasty Warriors defending your base against giant ogre things that come in uh, with Attack on Titan style gameplay. Uh, Faye, this is actually from Zoink Games, who are the developers of one of my favorite Wii platformers, the Core Gang, and uh, aesthetically it definitely shows, and I really, really love Faye. This is one that deserves uh, showing you a little bit of the trailer for sure, if you haven't seen this before. A very dark, but at the same time vibrant and colorful 3D platformer with a mechanic where you sort of like howl, and it, it uh, manipulates the environment and the animals that are around you. It's got a very crystal-like, dark horror, uh, almost Tim Burton vibe to it. And it, yeah, it's got some good flight elements, as you can see here. And yeah, you can ride around animals that you kind of call towards you. Almost like a Pikmin-style, uh, you know, sort of whistle effect going on in this game at times. But high, highly recommend it if you're into artsy platformers. Fight and Rage, played this one recently. Um, really fun, great soundtrack, really, really fun combo system. Very challenging beat-em-up. And it's uh, a little too hard for its own good at times for me, boy. It's, it's a hard beat-em-up, but if you're a fan of beat-em-ups in a retro style, highly recommend it. Couldn't really get into Final Fantasy Type-0 uh, all that much. It was 
One of the hardest Final Fantasy games for me to get into, um, I kind of gave it up after three hours, and one of these days I'd like to jump back into it and give it another try. Final Fantasy VII Remake, love this game, one of the best games that i played um, on the PS4 ever. You know, it's it's a phenomenal game, and I'm very hyped for Intergrade, which as of making this video comes out in a few weeks here, and I can't wait to play it on my PS5 at 60 frames a second. Final Fantasy X, 10, 10-2. 10, um, it is, you know, it is what it is. You know what Final Fantasy X is. I still have never played X-2, but I did do a speed run, which is why I got this version of the game. I, uh, I beat Final Fantasy X in just over 11 hours, which is a nice accomplishment for me um, to be able to say that I beat Final Fantasy X in 11 hours. But uh, yeah, speed run, a lot of fun. I love watching streams of that as well. X, I've actually come around to quite a bit. I used to not really care for this game too much, but when I came back to it a few years ago, I am, uh, I am a big fan of X now big fan of 10. I've really come around to Final Fantasy 10 um, to the point where it almost deserves doing its own video on Final Fantasy 10 at some point and how I came to the conclusion that one of my least favorite Final Fantasies is now suddenly one of my most favorite. So kind of be an interesting discussion. For Honor, um, really, really, really was into this for the first week or two. I was destroying people online. I don't remember what class it was, but I was using the one with the lance, um, the female class with the lance, where she was just like poking everybody. Boy, what a fun time this was online. But then as people started honing their skills and the fighting game community kind of came into this game and I started getting wrecked, um, the fun kind of dwindled. But boy, what a fun time I had with For Honor, and apparently it's still going strong. Uh, Flynn and Freckles. Here's a, here's a nice little recommendation that I have for you if you are into... Um, 3D platformers. This is a um, a pretty decent 3D platformer. It's not amazing. It's it's pretty janky. I, I actually did some speed runs of this because it does have a lot of glitches and a lot of out of bounds kind of stuff. But it's uh, it's lacking in story. What it lacks in story, it makes up for in gameplay. I'm kind of hoping that the trailer here shows you some gameplay. So yeah, it's a pirate pirate themed 3D platformer collectathon. Um, just kind of really fun to romp your way through if you can get this on sale, pretty cheap. Despite all the glitchiness, I'd say it's still absolutely worth playing if you consider yourself a fan of 3D platformers. Um, hold up, I just remembered. Did I skip the first row of games? Oh, I did. Yeah, I thought I did. I started at a row down. My bad. Let's just go back up here and, and look at these real quick. Because um, it reminded me of a Knight's Quest, and I'm like, I don't remember talking about this in this video. This is another 3D platformer that kind of skates more along the lines of a Zelda-type game, but it does have a lot of 3D platformer elements. This one is a lot more refined than Flynn and Freckles. Um... And I do highly recommend this. It's actually pretty solid if you're into platformers with a bit more of a Zelda twist on them. It borrows heavily from the Zelda series, but is that really a bad thing if they're borrowing from one of the best formulas in, you know, the entire industry? Obviously, it's not as good as a Zelda game, but as you can see here, the, the trailer is um, pretty nice, and the game itself is not terrible either. A Way Out had a lot of fun playing this co-op. Uh, an absolutely essential co-op game if you, you know, have somebody to play it with. And, um, yeah, an experience unlike any other. It's the game that has the split screen where you can play with another person and you're kind of cooperating together, but also seeing the other person's gameplay at the same time. A really unique twist on the sort of co-op over the internet um, split screen style that was apparently kind of dormant or dead until this game came out. Attack on Titan. Uh, I've only ever watched the first season of Attack on Titan, and that's kind of around when I bought this game and had an absolute blast with it. The gameplay in this is so fast and frantic. That uh, if you are a fan of this series and you've never played this game, I'm sure that, you know, the ones that have come after it may refine it a bit more, but this was a ton of fun. You can actually enjoy this without ever having watched the anime or be familiar with it or anything. The gameplay is that good. Arrow. This, uh, I do want to show you the, the trailer for this. Let it play in the background. Uh, this is a very, very interesting melding of genres. So this is actually a music rhythm game that is on rails with light shoot 'em up elements, sort of Panzer Dragoon in style. So you actually, you move your, your little craft around to match these lines to the beat of this sort of like Monster Cat style techno music. Um, but at the same time, you're shooting things and there's giant boss battles where you're shooting like giant spiders and everything. Um, so this is the music rhythm element of it here, where you're just using your joysticks to kind of line yourself up with the lines and match to the beat of the music. But uh, as you can see here in these screenshots, you fight some big enemies. So 
highly recommend it if you're a fan of on-rail shooters, but also music rhythm games. And the music is quite good and in your face. And Abyss Odyssey I picked up recently from a developer that I've really enjoyed past games from, which is Ace Team. They did the Xenoclash series. Uh, Abyss Odyssey is one of their games that they put out, never played it. Recently found out that they released a new version on the PS4, which is awesome because this was previously only available on the, uh, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, so I was kind of happy to see that. All right, let's uh, as I scroll back down to find where I was, let's take a water break. I'm doing this video unedited uh, straight through, so. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of talking. Flower, one of my favorite artsy fartsy games of all time, and I say artsy fartsy in a in a good way. Okay, that's just the term that I use to kind of summarize games that are, uh, you know, emotional, story-driven, absolutely beautiful types of games. Okay, I say that with the utmost respect, but Flower is, uh, I'd actually reviewed this game back when it came out. It's one of the last reviews I ever did on my channel. It may actually be the last one I did with uh, just directly putting a webcam at my TV to tell you how long ago that was. Flower is essential if you are a fan of games like Journey, okay, obviously it's from that game company, but it is an essential experience if you've never played Flower before. Um, it was transformative for me at the time. That kind of shaped my love for what I would consider to be its own genre, the artsy-fartsy genre. Firewatch, probably my favorite walking simulator, to be honest. Um, I played this completely going in blind, not knowing what to expect, and the story was, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time with this game. Like, I really had no idea what to expect out of Firewatch. This is another one that I did a fairly long review on on my channel at some point. So if you're interested in my in-depth thoughts, you can check that out. Final Fantasy XV. Um, I was very conflicted on XV. It was one of those things where I can never make up if the combat was something I loved or disliked. And I'm still not completely sure. I'd love to jump back into it now, though, now that the game runs really, really nicely on next-gen consoles at a solid 60 frames. I made it fairly deep into this game, about 75% of the way through, I'd say. And then I uh, I did end up dropping the game, but I would love to jump back into it. There were a lot of things I loved, such as the open world, the universe. I, at the time of the launch, the characters weren't too fleshed out in their side stories, so the characters I wasn't the biggest fan of. But uh, yeah, a very conflicting Final Fantasy game for me that will deserve more of my attention in the future. Forbidden Siren. This is the PS2 and PS4 classic version. Uh, very scary game. Very difficult game. Very hard game, but uh, it's such a unique aspect um, and gameplay mechanic of looking through your enemy's eyes. And um, if you absolutely have never played Forbidden Siren, I would recommend this if you're a fan of the survival horror genre. This is a PS Plus game. I actually played Fortnite the day it released on the PS4 when nobody really cared or knew about Fortnite. And um, <laughs> I was pretty good at it. I was actually, believe it or not, I was really into Fortnite for the first couple days. Uh, it was kind of reliving my SOCOM roots. I mean, I was having some fun with it and I was, you know, finishing in the top two or the top three. I never won a game. I finished in the top two and top three a handful of times. Never won a game. But the thing that pushed me away from it ultimately was the building mechanics. I did not like the building mechanics on a controller, sadly. Fruit Ninja VR, that was fun for like 15 minutes. That's a PS Plus game I never played. Giraffe and Annika. This is an interesting little platformer adventure game. Very cute. If you can actually get this on sale, I'd highly recommend it. There's no trailer here. But you play as this cute little cat girl. Um, and pretty much, you know, there, there's not a lot of challenge to this game. It's just a very, very light-hearted 3D platformer that uh, sort of has this open world, but it's quite linear. Um, and you just go around doing tasks for the villagers and stuff. If you're looking to just chill and have a fun weekend with a game that is like going to brighten up your day, get this game, I'm telling you. You'll you'll have some fun with it. Uh, Genso Skydrift. This one I just downloaded recently, and this is a kart racer with anime girls um, where they ride on top of one another. So imagine Mario Kart Double Dash with anime girls instead. And the kart is the girls themselves. And pretty much all they do is like you can swap back and forth between them, get a little bit of a speed boost. You drive through these rings or fly through these rings in this case to get a speed boost through those. I'm not really sure why this trailer is black and white. Okay, there we go. I was hoping to chase some gameplay. Uh, the music is really in your face, like Toho style. Um... Yeah, very fast. It, it starts off a little bit misleading. Like when I first started playing this game, I was like, man, this nightmare. Maybe I wasted my money on this one. But as the game goes on and the tracks get more and more involved in the game, it's faster and more challenging. Highly recommend this for kart racer fans. I had quite a bit of fun with that. 
All right, uh, let's see, where were we? Gra uh, Generation Zero. This is a very beautiful open world survival game. Um, I can't show you the, the page for this, but um, it's from the developers of this, this new game out with dinosaurs like Extinction something. I forget the exact name of it. But this has mechs in a sort of nice countryside from back in the 70s or 80s, I think it was. I forget the generation that this game took place in. Um, and there's mechs that have overtaken the countryside. So you're like rampaging through... Uh, deserted neighborhoods and farmhouses and there's like giant mechs kind of roaming all around the place and you're trying to find supplies it has a light online element but as janky as and unfinished as this game was when i first played it it hasn't received a lot of patch patches um i had a ton of fun with this actually beautiful game kind of underrated uh gauntlet that was ps plus i don't remember really loving that game galgun double piece uh yeah this is the kind of game that you probably don't want to uh to let your your friends know that you are playing, but uh, I've actually had a lot of fun with Gal Gun Double Piece. It's a fun game to stream. Uh, a pretty good light gun shooter, despite the themes of, um, well, if you know Gal Gun, you know what it's about. We'll just leave it at that. But it's actually a pretty fun light gun on rail shooter, honestly. Pretty fun. Good music, too. This is terrible. <laughs> I recently played this, and um, oh my goodness. This was one of those games where it's so bad it was bad. It had a lot of funny parts to it, but, uh, oof. Man, this is just an arena fighter one-on-one, -on -one, like Soul Calibur style, but there's no arena knockouts, but it's very obviously trying to be a Soul Calibur style game. Terrible. Um, absolutely terrible. Luckily, I only paid a dollar or two for that for a couple of good laughs. But I love checking out terrible games. <laughs> Once in a while, you find some gems. Um, speaking of gems, though, actually, if you're still... You know, for those of you that are still watching, I know this is pretty deep into the video already. Leave a comment below and let me know what are some of the weird games you found on PS4 that are, you know, not perfect, but games that you kind of found buried that nobody seems to talk about that you've had a lot of fun with. You know, leave some recommendations below. I'd love to check them out as well as other people in the comment section, I'm sure. Uh, there's so many crazy games to unearth in the PSN store that, you know, it's kind of hard to do it all on your own. Sometimes you need to check out what other people are recommending. Godfall or God of War rather um, I don't know what to tell you I couldn't finish this one it's a it's a great game but it was one of those things where I wasn't streaming it I think I was playing this offline and um, I don't know it's really hard for me to not stream a game and finish it I think if I would have been streaming this game from the beginning I probably would have been more committed to it and and look through to, to go through to the end um, I'd like to come back to it at some point, maybe when they come out with a def definitive PS5 version or something, which I'm sure will be inevitable. Um, but yeah, God of War seemed like a really good game, just never never committed to finishing it. Godfall, uh, I really enjoyed this actually as a PS5 launch game. I thought it looked really good. The haptic trigger support was a lot of fun with this. Kind of sh a good tech demo when it comes to showing what to expect from haptic triggers in the PS5 controller. Uh, kind of, you know, it, it felt like a PS2, PS3 game in the current generation, and I'm completely fine with that. I'm okay with a game that is very simple in its premise and what it wants to do and doesn't, you know, want to get too crazy in trying to innovate the genre, and I thought Godfall really succeeded in that dungeon-crawling sort of loot-finding game. Godzilla. I, I once did a video on this game many years ago when it first launched, talking about why I thought this game was worth playing for Godzilla fans. Because it was getting a lot of lot of negative reviews at the time when it came out. Some of it is completely understandable. But if you're a Godzilla fan and you're avoiding this game because you were scared of the reviews, play it. The problem is now, if you didn't take my advice back in the day, this game is extremely rare and expensive. Hundreds of dollars, upwards of $400 for this game. And it's delisted from the PSN store, so... I don't know what to tell you. Is it, is it worth that if you're a hardcore Godzilla fan? If you're a hardcore Godzilla fan, absolutely. If you're a casual Godzilla fan, probably not. No, absolutely not. Uh, but this is my personal favorite Godzilla game of all time. I just like how it feels like a Godzilla simulator. Very weighty. Has a good feel to it. Greedfall, haven't played that. That was a PS Plus game. Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life. Um, I don't quite enjoy this one as much as um, Save the Homeland. This, I think, was a PS Plus game. That was a demo I think I downloaded. Grow Home, really fun 3D platformer where you're just climbing up a vine the whole game. Another high recommendation for me. This was apparently available on PS Plus at some point. But I still pick it up if it's on sale. It's um, It's got a really nice aesthetic to it and simple controls. Very easy to understand. And it's kind of an essential platformer. Grim Fandango Remastered. This is, uh, you know, I don't play adventure games too often, and I did play this one several years ago and had a lot of fun with it. Um, 
but I don't delve into the adventure genre too too much, and I kind of want to change that, to be honest with you. I would love to play more adventure games, and um, I think this is a game that kind of told me that I need to do that because I had a lot of fun with Grim Fandango. Speak of Harvest Moon, this is um, one of my favorite Harvest Moon games. I haven't played a ton of the games in the series, but I, I kind of originally came into Harvest Moon with Harvest Moon 64, and then I moved on to Save the Homeland. And the PS2 version in particular, not the PSP version, is my favorite because I love the cell shading. Uh, just the cell shading in this looks so beautiful. And that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. And also because it places an emphasis on harvesting and farming over like the relationships in the game which i do enjoy the harvesting and the crops and the animals is my favorite part about harvest moon and it has multiple endings uh, different types of story arcs which i also enjoyed hetsune miku vr oh yeah i forgot i downloaded this oh uh, this was very interesting actually i forgot i did this so this is like a virtual uh hatsune miku concert that you could view in vr um yeah it, it was a little weird not gonna lie but it was actually kind of trippy and kind of fun. You know, this was in the heyday of VR for me when like these kind of experiences were still new and unique. And I'm sure now it's like a dime a dozen. But uh, at the time I was like, you know, I kind of casually liked Hatsune Miku music. And uh, this was kind of fun to dive into for a little bit. It's not really a game. It's more of an experience. But if you're a Hatsune Miku fan and you have VR capabilities, check it out. Hellblade. Really love what I played of this very dark and essential game with headphones. The sound design in this is one of the best that I have ever heard. And if you've never played it, I would um, highly recommend it. That was a PS Plus game. Here They Lie, one of the strangest and weirdest games I have ever played uh, in terms of like themes and visuals at times in this game. It's very, very weird in a creepy way. This is a VR game. I'd recommend playing it in VR if you can and if you're a fan of horror. Hypervoid, don't really remember much of that at all. Apparently it was PS Plus. Here we soar. Yeah, this is a very weird narrative game where you just fly around as a bird and it kind of tells a story. That's about all I remember about it. It wasn't that good. Oh, goodness. Horse Race Racing 2016. This is actually a very recent purchase. I streamed this just a few days ago. And uh, let me tell you, I did not expect to finish this game. It's a super janky game that was on sale for like a dollar. Uh, apparently so janky the PS Plus store won't even load up right now. But maybe I can show you screenshots? No, I can't. Anyway, I'll leave the mystery up to you. It has one of the most over-the-top soundtracks you're ever going to hear in a horse racing game. It The music is like if you're playing some crazy initial D drifting game from Japan or something, right? It's absolutely insane, and it was a good laugh. Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, this is a game that... Uh, another game that I should have been streaming but wasn't because I do feel like streaming helps me get through games and I was enjoying Horizon. However, it's one of those things where like I only have so much time to try to stream game or play games in my like, you know, offline time. And uh, this is a game that I wasn't streaming and I had a hard time finishing it because of that. And, you know, these days I try to stream pretty much anything I play. And this was one of the unfortunate side effects of not streaming this game i didn't finish it because you know i sit in a chair and play games enough so to do that in my not streaming time it was just a little too much for me and i couldn't keep up with finishing it to the end but what i did play was pretty phenomenal the story was getting really good so at some point i'd have to get back to this one hollow ball just a vr game that was okay indivisible actually i never ended up playing the demo of that inner space i haven't played yet uh this is a ps plus jack and daxter ps2 on ps4 version love jack and daxter this game looks phenomenal on ps4 and uh, highly recommend it if you're a fan of the ps2 original journey um yeah, well if you watch my top 10 p uh, top 10 games of the decade this is one of the games that is on there so you know what more can i say about journey an essential experience that continues to get ported it's even available on mobile these days i think at this point and um i think i think it got a mobile port and i'm just glad that more people get to experience journey and some people are still keeping the the capes alive and the the scarves alive by continuing to play this game and helping new players it's uh, one of the best games ever in my opinion knack 2 might as well do these two together knack 1 knack 2 um, I recently went back and played Knack to get excited about the launch of the PS5, and boy, the game actually still kind of holds up. I think my complaints with it that I originally had are still kind of holding true, where the game is just overly long. It does get repetitive towards the end of the game. The levels are very, very long. The story is pretty much terrible. Um, Knack 2, however, improves upon that a lot by making the story a bit more involved in the game but the story is still pretty bad if you can call that an improvement but the story is a bit more present they try to do a cinematic feel to it but 
it's just, you know, it's a kid's game. They try to take this story too seriously. But the number one thing that Knack 2 improved upon was the gameplay. Uh, just the, the gameplay and the level designs got such a big boost. And I'd say if you played the first Knack and didn't really enjoy it, but you saw the promise that it had and you've never played Knack 2, I would highly recommend it if you're a fan of 3D platformers. Just don't worry about the story. If anything, just skip the story. Don't worry about the story. It's just, just play it for the gameplay. It's definitely worth it. Uh, that was PS Plus. This was a launch game. Honestly, Killzone Shadowfall. If you want to know the origins of my downfall with the first-person shooter genre, this is it. Because this is the last first-person shooter that I bought, mostly due to launchitis. I picked this up and um, I played it for a day or two, and I just realized that first-person shooter games just weren't doing it for me anymore. They were feeling too much of the same. They just weren't grabbing my attention as much as they used to. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much like the last first-person shooter that I paid retail price for, to give you an idea. But I'm trying to come back around to the genre. I plan on playing Titanfall 2's campaign soon, which I think will help, uh, you know, maybe reinvigorate my love for first-person shooters on console. Recently bought this, haven't played it yet. Kata Kanakami, kind of an interesting-looking top-down action game. This is actually really good. This was a, a PlayStation Plus game at some point. This is Kung Fu uh, Panda Showdown of Legendary Legends. It's a it's a Smash Brothers knockoff, and um, wow, I had a ton of fun with this playing it online. I think the fact that oh, there's no trailer. I think the fact that this was a PlayStation Plus game, so there were a lot of people playing it online at the time, was quite neat. And um, yeah, if you're a fan of Smash Brothers and you're just looking to have a little bit of fun with some friends, absolutely try this game. And if you want to be overpowered, use the duck. The duck character in here is just busted. This is a very interesting survival horror game. If you uh, are a fan of old school PS2 era survival horror games, high, high recommendation if you are this game's target audience. Okay, you can look at this and immediately be like, wow, this looks like something like Kuon or you know, in the style of, um, I don't know, something like Rule of Rose with the, the, the way that the movement looks or the combat. So this game is very interesting in that it combines point and click adventure. You can actually see the inventory on your screen there at all times on the right. And yes, that is a mouse cursor that you control with the touchpad on the PS4 controller or the PS5 controller. So you interact with items and things in the game world using the touchpad and the mouse cursor, sort of, sort of clock tower in style with real time janky survival horror combat in this sort of um, ancient Japan uh, setting from the 1930s. And uh, wow. What, what an interesting game this was. Very hard. It actually got so hard towards the end that I couldn't finish it right at the very end of the game. But um, I would recommend this if you're into yokai. There's a huge yokai presence in this game and theme in this game. That puzzle, oh man, goodness gracious, some of the puzzles later in this game. Let me just say one thing. If you're kind of like shameless in that you'll never look up a hint for a game because you're, you just want to do it without hints, uh, don't play this game. Some of the puzzles later on get so brutally cryptic, you won't be able to beat it. Uh, I was able to do it without hints, but boy, let me tell you, it's uh, it was phew, difficult at times. Anyway, pretty high recommendation on that one if you know what you're getting into. Still haven't played that. Uh, don't remember too much about Laser Life, kind of an on-rails, matching your joysticks to the rhythm kind of thing, if I remember right haven't played that i don't think loading human was an okay psvr game uh lizard lady versus the cats oh boy yeah this this is a video game all right so this is one of those janky like one dollar games that i picked up on a whim and ended up you know a game that you can beat in five minutes i ended up playing this game like literally five minutes i'm not joking i ended up playing this game for a few hours uh trying to speed run it and uh it was actually kind of fun it was a good laugh to have on stream with people for a bit um, and it's exactly as it looks. You just walk around shooting things as uh, a lizard lady killing cat people. And uh, yeah, that's that's about that's about all of the premise of this game. Check it out. It's really cheap. If you have some friends over at some point and you're looking for some silly stuff to play, check it out. Limbo. Um, well, Limbo... I mean, what can we say about Limbo? It kind of set the precedent, right, for a new genre of platformers, black and white style shadow type platformers. And of course, people start the weed whacker outside my window, of course, as I'm doing this video. Apologies for that if you can hear it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Limbo, but honestly, I haven't played it since it released. I guess I picked this up on PS Plus at some point. This is a pretty high recommendation. Um, if you're a fan of artsy 3D platformers, the trailer kind of doesn't do this game justice from what I remember, but you play as a little astronaut in a very um, light, well, 
the name of the game, Lifeless Planet. It, I think it actually does a good job of conveying what you're getting into here. They make it look more like an adventure game in the trailer, but it's definitely more of a 3D exploration platformer that I had a lot of fun with. Uh, so the main mechanic here, as you see, is hopping around with your jetpack and uh, kind of just exploring these environments that um, are not sort of like, hey, it's obvious that you need to jump on this platform, right? you got to do a lot of exploring and look, looking, looking around in the nooks and crannies. And uh, yeah, I actually highly recommend this game if you're looking for something a little bit different. Life of Black Tiger. Uh, yeah, this game, this is something, boy, let me tell you. Uh, I actually happen to be a big fan of Life of Black Tiger because I love terrible games that you can have a good laugh with. And let me tell you, the PS5, when you play this on a PS5, it actually runs at a steady 60 frames per second. So I've been meaning to go back and play it again. Um, yeah, it's it's as bad as it looks, but it's also hilariously bad. So it's one of those things, it's one of those games where it's so bad it's actually good. And uh, if you're looking for a good laugh and also having a terrible time playing it, check out Life of Black Tiger. Um yeah, kind of a legendary game, uh, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> One of those, how did this end up on the PS4 market release to begin with? Alright, Lost Ember. This is another artsy-fartsy type game uh, that I actually really enjoyed. It has a very nice visual style, almost cel-shaded in, in a lot of ways, where you play as a wolf that can take control of different animals, such as birds and little... Uh, creature i forget some of the animals that you can even play as but like little i don't even remember what they call them but they can kind of like make burrows and like go underground and go through tunnels um, but the main thing that you play as is the wolf and the bird and fly around uh, you can already probably tell from these screenshots if you'd be into this type of game but i do recommend it uh don't know what that is ps plus game luminous remastered uh, I am a huge fan of Luminous. I'd actually go as far as to say that Luminous, the first Luminous, is what this is based on, is my favorite puzzle game of all time. And this is a wonderful remastered version that apparently has some issues if you play it on a PS5. So, proceed with caution. Mailmole. Uh, this is a really nice little 3D platformer. I was pleasantly surprised by this. And I this is a very high recommendation for me. Um if you're a fan of this genre. So it plays a lot like Super Lucky's Tale, if you've ever played that, where you can burrow, but you're always forced to burrow. You cannot walk around on the top of the ground. So popping out of the burrow kind of gives you a little speed boost, and uh, the, the, the speed of movement in this game is very satisfying, as you can see here. Um, the music is very, you know, happy and go like It's just got a very positive vibe going on the entire time through this game. Um, so yeah. 3D platformer fans, this is one that may not be on your radars. This is also available on the Switch. Um, you know, no, no frills. There's nothing crazy that it does to reinvent the genre, but comes with a high recommendation for me. Man Eater, haven't played it yet. Monkey King Hero is back. So this is another really interesting one. Um, you can actually get this physically pretty cheap. This is, of course, one of those uh, Sun Wukong games, um, but it's an... It's an action 3D adventure game, and it's worth a play. I'd actually say if you can get this cheap enough, and it's a pretty cheap game these days, it is worth a play. It's uh, It's got some pretty satisfying combat. I don't think the trailer here is really going to show you too much. But it's got some pretty si satisfying combat and some beautiful environments in sort of like this eastern setting. And uh, yeah, this trailer is probably not a good trailer. Let's see if I can just at least show you a little taste of the screenshots here. It's got a nice flow to the combat, very overly exaggerated moves. It's based on a kid's movie that uh, I, I guess apparently came out in the US. But if you can get this game for like $10 or under, absolutely worth trying. Mitch Berry Challenge, just a silly little wacky 2D platformer. Uh, let's see here. Masquerade. This is a weird beat-em-up with cell shaded graphics. I feel like I'm at times I felt like I was the only person that has ever played this game. But you play as this weird blue jester, and you beat up clowns, and uh, yeah, that's it's got a lot of platforming elements, and it's not a very good game, that is for sure. I would not recommend this unless you, for whatever reason, really feel compelled by the trailer and the screenshots, which I kind of wanted to give it a shot. Yep, not a good trailer, so let's see if I can show you some screenshots here. Uh, but it is cell shaded so if you're a fan of cell shaded games there's not a lot of like true cell shaded games coming out anymore um just like a little platformer action beat em up game that uh could be a fun time killer for an evening but i don't really recommend it only if you're really looking to grasp at straws for something different to play maquette i'm meaning to play that recently i recently got that on ps plus monster hunter world i gave it a shot i just can't get into the genre anymore it's just one of those kind of um 
too much of a time commitment to get into this series at this point. I just don't have that kind of time streaming all different types of games every day. Monster of the Deep, this was a PSVR uh, Final Fantasy 15 fishing game that was a little bit disappointing. Moose Life, oh man, these, these are my, this is a Pete Dore game, right? You look at this game and yeah, this is a me game. So this is a, <laughs> this is a Jeff Minter game, um, Llama Soft, right? So Tempest 2000, Tempest 3000, you know, you, you know what you're getting into when it comes to a Jeff Minter game. And uh, this comes with a high recommendation if you're into arcade style, over the top psychedelic arcade games. Uh, this has a really addicting high score mechanic to it. We are pretty much just a moose and you flip up and down on top of the screen from the top to the bottom shooting things and trying to keep your score multiplier going and it looks amazing in a 4k setting uh, resolution. Particle effects in this are crazy ridiculous and you get all different types of power-ups. Um, believe me, Moose Life, worth a try if you're a fan of Jeff Minter games. Uh, Mulaka, oh, this is another good recommendation. Um, this, highest of high recommendations for me if you are into Zelda-like platformers, okay? So this has a, uh, a theme from Mexico, like ancient Mexico, uh, is what the game is themed around, and you pr play as a tribesman, and it's got um, some really satisfying Zelda-like combat, but the main draw here is the soundtrack, which is a completely originally composed soundtrack from authentic music from the times, and the, the visuals here are sort of like this um, vector style, almost cell shaded style, and um, yeah, Mulaka, unlike any other game I've played from this genre, very unique, you know, it's not perfect, it's got a lot of like unrefined elements to it, but it's got a great sense of movement. You actually transform into different animals. So you can transform into a bear, a bird, a wolf, all kinds of stuff. I don't know if they're going to show it here in the trailer. But um, if you can get this game on sale especially, give it a look. I'm not sure what they're asking for it at retail value at the moment. But um, yeah, Lulaka, great game. Nerved, really janky first-person horror game. Had a lot of good laughs out of this one from when I played it in October. Every October I do a horror month where I play nothing but horror games, and that's one of the ones I did this past October. Really don't recall my time with Need for Speed Rivals, but I did pick that up for the launch of the PS4. Natural Doctrine, one of the most difficult battle systems that I have ever played in an RPG, but one of the most satisfying once you can get the hang of it. Very difficult game, very different, never played an RPG quite like it. Uh, Narcosis, this is actually a pretty nice recommendation if you're looking for something different in the walking simulator horror genre. So the entire game pretty much takes place under the water. So if you have a fear of being underwater and getting stuck in caves and stuff, and also if you suffer from, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, where, where you know, you're afraid of tight spaces, of course, I can't think of it off the top of my head, uh, claustrophobia. If you're, if you're claustrophobic and you have a fear of dark places and being underwater, this would be your worst nightmare. This game would be terrifying for you, but there's a really unique twist to this game that I recommend playing it for. I'm not going to say anything about it, just say, I'm just going to say, play it, it's worth it if you're a fan of this style of game. Uh, Muta Mutazion. This was actually originally an Apple Arcade game that got ported to consoles, and this is a very chill game. Uh, I'm telling you, if you're into a game where you just want to zone out and not care about anything else going on in the world at the time, I think the screenshots might do a better justice. Uh, you just kind of you're on this island and you're just chilling with these uh, these villagers, and you're taking care of your plant farm and. You're just relaxing. So if you're a fan of sort of like Animal Crossing style, I guess assuming like Stardew Valley kind of stuff, um, you know, just sort of life simulators, chill, relaxing simulators. <laughs> if that's a thing, check out this game. Not a good streaming game for me though. Kind of, kind of slow. This is a fun little platformer where you play as a little kid with his wolf. Very heartfelt, emotional game. Neverwinter, I don't even remember playing that, to be honest. Um, Nino Kuni 2, disappointing in all ways compared to the original. Wasn't a fan of what they did with the direction of the combat and the story and the characters and just taking out the Ghibli vibe in general. Nickelodeon Kart Racers, I, uh, I actually paid full price for this game. But I got my money's worth because I did a couple of speedruns. I ran it in a speedrun marathon, so I got, I got my money's worth out of it. A pretty simplistic kart racer, not terrible but also not amazing just very you know you got drifting you got boosts uh pretty pretty much a slap in the face to nickelodeon fans because they left out a lot of content that you would expect to be in this game night in the woods um another one of those sort of like chill out 
story, you know, talk to the village kind of games like Mutazone. Um, yeah, couldn't fully get into this one because it is, you know, once again, pretty much everything I play I stream. And this is not a good streaming game, at least for me. But I do recommend it if you're into those sort of like chill out and talk to villagers kind of games. No idea what that is. No Man's Sky. I bought into the hype of No Man's Sky. I mean, I was hyped up beyond belief for this game for the launch. Of course, I fell into the hype hole and uh, was ultimately disappointed in the end, but I did still have a lot of fun with it. I have not gone back to it since all the recent updates that it has received, and maybe one day I will give it another shot because apparently it's come full circle and it's a big hit now with people that are playing it. Neo. Um, enjoyed it. I only played it for one night because it was, um, it was just, you know, I actually got a review copy of this game and I... Uh, I played it for a night, enjoyed it, but I wasn't really ready for playing this type of game at the time because of the brutal difficulty, but I definitely appreciated the setting and kind of what they did with uh, with the genre for Neo. Ninja Senki DX, uh, this was a little disappointing. So the trailer was a little deceiving for me on this game. It's pretty much a Game Boy Color game, right, visually, but it's just too difficult for the wrong reasons, I felt. I thought that the speed at which enemies came at you and like where they appeared on screen was just a little too punishing. Um, and the bosses were very boring. Um, I know this looks like it, it, you're probably looking at this if you've never seen it before and you're like, oh my goodness, this looks so good. It's okay. I mean, it's like a solid 5 out of 10 style game. It's not terrible, but it's also not amazing. But yeah, the difficulty was a little... It's just one of those like it's challenging for the wrong reasons kind of game. Night Trap, 25th anniversary. Oh my goodness, I played this last October. This was my first time playing Night Trap, and I had such a good time with this game. And this 25th anniversary version, where you can have like the new UI that's a lot clearer and easier to kind of see what's going on around the house. Oh my goodness, so many good laughs from this. Really fun and strategic game. I had, I had a blast playing Night Trap for the first time uh, this past October. Just nabbed this on PS Plus while it was still available. Haven't played it yet. Okage Shadow King, one of my favorite PS2 era RPGs. Um, I loved it enough to do some speedruns of it, so I've beat Okage in like six hours or so. Uh, one thing you need to know about the PS4 version, it does not work on a PS5. So this is one of the reasons to keep a PS4 around if you are a fan of Okage or plan on playing Okage for the PS4 version. Uh, it is super glitchy and unplayable on the PS5. But if you're a fan of very simple turn-based RPGs with a sort of nice, almost claymation-looking Tim Burton-esque style to this game, very quirky, very weird, there's nothing quite out there like Okage Shadow King, and I think for that it deserves a lot more attention than it already gets. Onichanbara Z2 Chaos, uh, the best disc art on a game of all time. Google it. Uh, Outcast. I played the original PC version that they released on Steam. I haven't gotten around to playing the second contact version of this, uh, but I did get this when it was on sale for a buck or two. Um, I remember really liking this. Very innovative, very ahead of its time game with an open world. And uh, yeah, recommended if you're a fan of procedurally generated. Um, I think it's procedurally generated. Maybe it isn't. I don't remember. But it's got a huge open world. And if you're a fan of third person action shooting games and you want to see sort of like a very early look at the evolution of the genre, this is an essential game. Outlast played this a few years ago for my October streams, and uh, this was uh, terrifying. One of the scariest games I've ever played. It definitely lived up to the hype of being really scary, okay? You gotta remember one thing. I don't like being chased by things in games, and this whole game is about being chased. And it was, it was really, really scary at times, but edge of my seat, you know, it was still a lot of fun. I think it kind of fell off towards the end of the game. I did not like where they went with the, the end of the, the game for Outlast, but the, the first like 75% was phenomenal. Persona 5, uh, I put like 50 hours into this game, didn't beat it, because it was a game that I wasn't streaming at the time, and one of these days I'd like to back, go back and start again and play Royal, except this time I think I might stream it, try streaming it. Parappa the Rapper 2, love this game, okay? I never really played too much of this series back uh, originally when it was out. I mostly just played like the demo of the first game, never even played the second game. Recently I played the PS2 version, of, I mean the, the PS4 version of this and fell in love with it. Some of the songs in here are so catchy, so good. Um, you know, especially the Noodle song, come on, the Noodle song? I don't want to, I'd, I'd recite some of the lyrics, but I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble here on YouTube, okay? That is quite a song. Um, I actually did speedruns of this game. If you didn't know, you can speedrun Parappa the Rapper 2, and I actually have the fourth best time in the world. If you go to speedrun.com, you can watch my video and see how you can actually speedrun Parappa the Rapper. 
but it is a thing. You can do it. PT. Uh, I would say that this is probably the scariest experience I have ever had playing a game. And this is the reason why I will never get rid of my PS4. I've played PT a few times. I've got the true ending, you know, the one where you use an outside accessory in order to access the final trailer for Silent Hills. Um, mortifying experience. I originally was recording um, a video of this for YouTube way back in the day when this came out, and unfortunately my sound capture got screwed up, and I, I couldn't release it because the sound was messed up. But, um, oh my goodness, this is probably the highest my heart rate and anxiety has ever been playing a game before. And a uh, memorable experience that I will never forget. It is absolutely essential. If you are a fan of horror games and you still have never watched a playthrough or somebody play PT, and you somehow have the ability to play PT at a friend's house or get a hard drive that has PT on it or something, you must play PT, okay? You must. Outward, um, I played this for a night with a friend. We had a blast with it. It was uh, actually a really fun game to play two-player online co-op, kind of inventory management and busting into camps and taking out uh, the different enemies that were in there and strategically talking about how we were going to do it. Just, wow, I had a lot of fun with Outward, actually, and um, I would recommend it if you're a fan of open-world RPGs, especially if you're going to play online co-op with people. Uh, I have not played LS 2. I guess this is just on here. I must have bought it on sale at some point. Poi, really, really nice 3D platformer. Um, if you're a fan of Mario 64, this is essential. I know I know the cover here doesn't really do it for you, but if you're not familiar with Poi, this is some of the most satisfying movement I have ever played in a 3D platformer. Um, just like the way that you jump and dive around in this game and combo your jumps together. And it's a nice collectible, collect-a-thon game. I know the trailer here may make it look like a little simplistic, but trust me, this is a game you want to play if you're a fan of the genre. Predator Hunting Grounds, I played the beta for this, or like the pre-launch demo with the online, and oh my goodness, this was so much fun when you play as the Predator. Uh, I had such a blast with that, but the problem was on console, the resolution wasn't high enough on this game to really pinpoint things in the distance as easily as you could on PC, so ultimately I never decided to continue playing it. Prey, I think I played the demo for this, I believe. I remember liking it, but um, yeah, just not really enough to, to stick with it for, for too long. Primal, this was fun. This is a PS2 on PS4 game. Um, sort of a nice, weird combination of an adventure game. Very high emphasis on cutscenes and story with some light action gameplay. Very weird, sort of horror adjacent, I guess, if you will, in its themes. Uh, worth a try. Not for everybody, though. PS Plus. Uh, oh, this game. Jeez. This is another recent download that... Uh, <laughs> well... Look at the trailer and you tell me what this reminds you of. So this is actually a port of a mobile game to consoles and PC. However, this game is trying to be something um, very evidently, and you'll see here in a second. I immediately jumped on this after watching the trailer and uh, you know, for what it is, it does a pretty good job. This is actually trying to emulate the Elder Scrolls series. I know it's a little hard to tell as of right now, but you'll see in a moment. And for a game that was on mobile and ported the console, it, it felt pretty okay, actually. Um, the world itself is quite nice to look at. The music is like ripped straight out of the Elder Scrolls series. The combat, not the best in the world, uh, but it does a, a nice job of kind of creating this open world environment and emulating what the Elder Scrolls series is. And I think if you're looking for some janky fun and you're, you're looking to have a good laugh out of it with some friends, perhaps, uh, and you're a big fan of Elder Scrolls, and you're kind of tapped out on that series, um, give this one a try. It's um, it's not a good game, but it's also not terrible. Ratchet and Clank, um, great game. This version, you know, the, the PS4 Ratchet and Clank, I eagerly await Rifts Apart, which is coming out very soon. PS Now, Raiden, Raiden 4, haven't gotten around to it yet, but I look forward to it. Don't really remember Radial G too much. Rec Room, really fun PSVR game to play online. Had a blast with this, actually. Uh, it's sort of like just different activities, be it paintball, uh, you know, ping pong, all, all times of fun recreational style mini games that you can play online with people. I uh, haven't played Remnant, that's a PS Plus game. Resident Evil, PS Plus, but obviously I have played it on GameCube. Really scary, love the graphics in it. Played this this two, two years ago, two Octobers ago. Really enjoyed the remake of Resident Evil 2, let me tell you. I've been having a resurgence and a, a absolute love for the horror genre, which I have neglected, you know, until the past six years. And uh, wow, what an amazing game. 
Not quite as amazing Resident Evil 3. Still a good game, but it doesn't hold a candle to Resident Evil 2 in terms of atmosphere. I did appreciate the more action-oriented uh, take on this version of Resident Evil 3, but it was nowhere near as scary as 2. Okay, Absolutely terrifying experience for me being chased around in that game. Rigs, uh, a mech-based combat VR game. First-person shooter. Uh, very crazy fun movement in that, but uh, very prone to motion sickness. Take a sip of water here. Res Infinite. Res, one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, this is the best version that you can play, absolutely. You can play in VR. Be very forewarned, though. This game will make your neck very sore. You're going to be looking around like this the whole time. And um, wow, my neck and shoulders are not prepared for that. But you can still play it normally. Res, one of the best games ever, for me, at least. One of my favorite games ever. Um, it's an on-rails sort of Panzer Dragoon-style game with very trippy um, visuals. And music that is uh, super, super energetic and trance-like and techno-like. I mean, it's it's got an amazing soundtrack. If you've never played Res before, it's kind of essential. Returnal, been very much enjoying this. I've been meaning to jump back into it. It's been a bit since I've played. I still have yet to beat the third biome. I've only played it for about eight hours, though. But uh, early impressions are it's definitely one of the best games I've played this year so far. Looking forward to jumping back into it. And it's a great game uh, for the PlayStation 5. Resogun which, funny enough, is right next to Returnal, basically, you know, same same developers. Uh, I never really played too much Resogun. I appreciated it for what it was for the launch of the PS4, but I didn't uh, give it too much time. Resident Evil 7, I've actually only played VR, and it's, to this day, the most e immersive experience I have ever had with a video game. Playing Resident Evil 7 in VR was insane. Like, it felt like I was living in this game. Um so memorable playing this in VR, and I will never forget it. And for that, it's uh, it's honestly one of my favorite horror experiences I've ever had. Rhyme. Not a lot of people are a big fan of Rhyme. Rhyme is one of those eco, uh, you know, comparison type games. Very artsy fartsy kind of uh, action, more, more so platformer, puzzle platformer. I really enjoyed Rhyme though. I know it's there's some people that are kind of turned off by it and it's puzzles and it's kind of, you know, it starts to overstay its welcome, but I still very much recommend Rhyme if you're a fan of games like Eco. This was PS Plus. Sinai of Wild Hearts. Really enjoyed this one. Um, visually and musically, an absolute complete package when it comes to presentation. Highest recommendation if you're into sort of music rhythm story-based games. Um, I don't know if the trailer here will do it justice, but... It's uh, visually very striking, where you sort of go through different uh, levels against bosses that have their own themes in terms of the story and the music. And Well, yeah, the trailer's taken a little bit much get, getting into here, but as you can see, it's got a very striking visual style. And if you are still unaware of this game and you're a fan of on-rails racing and uh, music rhythm games, it's kind of a combination of all different types of genres. Check that one out. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This is the new PS4 uh, remastered version. Um, had a lot of fun with it. You know, my memories of playing the original version that came out on 360 were kind of very vague, so it was nice to come back to this game and actually beat it, because I don't think I beat it originally. And I can't download it anymore on my 360, so this was kind of nice to be able to download and check out. Um, pretty essential game if you're a fan of the beat-em-up genre. It's There's nothing else quite like it out there and it has a really really good soundtrack from Anamanaguchi. Another Winter is one of my favorite songs of all time for video games and yeah that alone to me is worth checking out the game for it and the combo system is a lot of fun. Sea of Solitude has been getting a lot of attention as of late uh, which I'm really glad about because this game well unfortunately there's no trailer uh, was one of those games that was sort of on the EA Play, where EA was making a big push for indie games, and this is one of the games that they made a big push for. It's a very emotional, dark, somewhat depressing game at times. So, you know, it's uh, you know not a very super feel-good game to play at times as the story progresses, but it's uh, it's got a nice story to tell at the, at the very end of it. And um, I think from what I've heard, they've updated it to have better voice acting now and everything. And um, yeah, it's one of those artsy-fartsy exploration platformers, but uh, it was good. I'd recommend it if you can get this on sale or if you have it on PS Plus or anything like that. I think it may have been available on there at some point. Sega Drive Mega Classics Collection, Shape the World. This is another visually striking walking simulator, and I just want to show the visuals for this. So you just walk around and the world kind of evolves as you move, sort of like a Proteus kind of 
vibe to this one. You can already tell from the screenshots if this would be something for you. Um, very relaxing game. Shadow of the Ronin, just a janky game. Uh, unfinished. It's one of those B. Pontes games, if you're familiar with him. I don't, even, I don't remember his full name. But he's known for releasing unfinished, terrible games on the PSN and charging a premium for them. And suckers like me buy them to stream them. <laughs> Shadow of the Colossus remake, phenomenal remaster of this. Uh, just one of the best remasters I've ever seen for a game of all time. I would love to come back to this and do another playthrough at some point. Uh, this is the version I recommend if you've never played Shadow of the Colossus before. This is absolutely the version that you want to play and experience for the first time. Shadow of the Beast. This is a very poor recreation of the Shadow of the Beast series. It takes a more action-oriented um, dive into the game, uh, where it emphasizes combo-based combat that's very over the top, and the UI is like very in-your-face. It sort of misleads you in the first 30 minutes of the game that you might actually be playing something that is worthy of being called Shadow of the Beast, but trust me, it is not worthy of that name. Something about this game kind of draws me to it, though. I, I have beat it when it came out, and lately I've been wanting to go back and revisit it again. So if you're looking to see me play this, I'm probably going to be streaming it pretty soon at some point. So, you know, if you're not checking out my Twitch, follow me on there if you want to catch that playthrough. Sekiro, this is another thing that I, um... I, uh... I played through for a night or two, really appreciated the environments and the difficulty, but uh, you know, this is the same case with Neo where I wasn't completely feeling this genre at the time, so I kind of didn't give it too much of my attention. Shenmue, uh, it took me three times to finally eventually get through Shenmue, you know, I'm not going to go over my whole story as to why that is, but I am a new huge Shenmue fan, I am, I am a huge, huge fan of the first game, especially. Um, and the second game, of course, I do love, but I really, really like the first game, and I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I was never able to beat it originally back on the Dreamcast, but uh, having played the HD remaster version to completion, I think streaming it really helped me helped me do that. Uh, experiences, spare, experiencing this game fully to the end for the first time with an audience was a real treat. Shenmue 3. I made it halfway through this game exactly, right, to the point where you eventually transition into the next big open area to explore, and um, I don't know, my thoughts on Shenmue 3 are kind of mixed. I was kind of feeling it at times, kind of not feeling it at times for various reasons. Would I like to go back to this game at some point? Yeah, but I'm not like... I'm not feeling the draw, right? I'm not feeling like this is an essential game for me to finish. Um, I'm glad I finished the first two, but I was struggling a little bit to, to stay with this one. Great visuals, though. Don't think I played that yet. This is a terrible little janky game. This is one of my highest recommendations for fans of 3D platformers. Um, Skylar and Plux. If you're a fan of games like Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, this is one of my absolute highest recommendations on the PSN store for 3D platformers. This is also the game that got me in the speedrunning, but speedrunning aside, we're just going to talk about the game as, as itself here for a first-time casual playthrough. It's got really satisfying movement, really nice jumping. It's got a jetpack mechanic where you can um, like roll around and get a jetpack boost. It's got uh, hovering it's got some really like simple combat. The story is nothing to write home about. If anything, the story is kind of hollow. But you can just tell by watching this trailer here, right? You can see the environments. You can see the influences. It's a fairly short game that you can definitely beat in a night or two, depending on how much you play it. But uh, yeah, just a beautiful, fun, vibrant, fun to control and platform in a uh, 3D platformer with without a lot of gimmicks. You know, it's pretty straightforward in, in what it sets out to do for a collect-a-thon game. And yeah, just a phenomenal little game that I hope the developers maybe make a sequel to one day. Sonic Mania, loved it. You know, I'm not obsessed with it, but I appreciate what they did to the Sonic genre with the release of Sonic Mania in terms of classic Sonics. I'm definitely more of a fan of 3D Sonics over the 2D ones. So this is a very interesting release that I don't think got a lot of attention. This is Soul Seraph. Um, this is actually a spiritual follow-up. Oh, from Ace Team. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, Xenoclash guys. A spiritual follow-up to the Act Razor series, and if you see some gameplay here, it is very evident that that is what this is trying to be. So it even has the sort of overworld mechanic, however, this is probably the worst part of the game. It instead plays out like a tower defense game, which is all well and fine, except the game is kind of oversaturated with these tower defense sections, and I think if they would have lessened them a bit or just decreased their time that you would play them, the game would have been way better. Um, apparently that's where the trailer cuts off. But uh, the gameplay, like the 2D gameplay, the side-scrolling gameplay is actually straight up 
Razor, and it's pretty challenging. Uh, it looks really good, and if you're an Ack Razor fan, I'd say this is an essential game to check out if you can overcome the tower defense stuff. So this here is one of the rarest PS4 games. Why? Because it was only available digitally, and uh, from what I understand, I think this game was removed from the PlayStation Network, if I remember right. I'm, I'm actually not sure if this is still available. There's no trailer up for it, but look at the font, okay? There's something about this game. You see that? That is Zelda font. This entire game is comprised of only stolen assets. All the music, all the visuals, all the font, every everything the character models is stolen from other games i downloaded this close to when it came out and i don't think you can get it anymore because of the stolen assets problem uh, it's a terribly janky game but you'll get a good laugh out of it if you've ever watched some gameplay of it snow runner surprisingly loved this game and i highly recommend it if you've never played um this genre this is actually my first time diving into the sort of mud runner uh genre of games and this one, of course, without the mud, it's got some mud, but it's also got snow. And I was oddly pulled into this where it's just simulating like driving a giant truck through the snow and mud, trying to deliver various things. And my goodness, this was way more fun than I was expecting. Trust me, you know, I never thought I'd be into a trucking game like this. But oh my goodness, if you have never given a thought to this genre, you have to try SnowRunner. I think it's available on Game Pass or... PS now it's available for free somewhere I think uh, I've seen recently so check it out Snakey Puss Snakey Puss Snakey Bus had a lot of fun with this too um, I went into this without knowing fully what to expect and came out pleasantly surprised it's a very simple premise where you just play as a bus that keeps getting longer and longer and longer it's like a 3d version of snake or something and you just got to avoid crashing into yourself as your bus gets longer and longer and wow it's uh it's a ton of fun super simple easy to play and get into and uh, highly recommended sound shapes believe it or not remember remember this game this was my top rated vita game for the launch of the, the playstation vita i actually had a lot of fun with this little music based platformer um, not much more to say about it i mean i think i kind of overrated it at the time if i'm going to be completely honest but i at the time when this game launched on the vita it was a fantastic game and um you know i haven't played it since but it's it's still worth checking out very janky game. Uh, this game here is, I think, one where you only... No, no, this is this is another... I get this confused with another one of these b Pontes games where it's unfinished garbage that was overcharged from the PSN. Haven't played Splunky. Uh, this was my first time actually playing SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. And I'm really glad that I never played it before because the HD remaster was an absolute joy to go through. Okay, so this game, I think, gets some undeserved... Uh, hate and criticism. I, I, well, well, I should rephrase that. This game is definitely underrated. Okay, um, the criticism is definitely warranted because it it has a lot of issues, and that's Star Ocean integrity and faithlessness uh, on the PS4. I actually really love the combat in this. I think the environments are you know kind of fun to explore in their open world esque nature. The story is terrible and pretty much might as well not even exist in this game, but I think the combat as a whole with the large party system that you get in this game is uh, one of the things that drives it forward. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Really enjoyed what I played of this. Um, didn't finish it though, but visually, I mean, and gameplay wise, this is absolutely one of the, the best Star Wars games to ever release. One of these days I'd hope to get back to it and, and finish it. This was also my first time playing Star Wars Jedi Knight uh, Jedi Academy. I played it online. This is the PS4 version. Not a lot of people are aware that they really re-released this on PS4 with online servers. And uh, I tried that out and had an absolute blast. Blasting people back with my force powers, pushing them in the pits, playing online. It was actually pretty fun for a night or two. Star Wars Episode One Racer. This is the PS4 version that they re-released. And uh, wow, what an amazing version of this game. If you've ever only played the PC, or, sorry, the N64 or the Dreamcast versions of this game, uh, this is a port of the PC version, and this runs at a rock-solid 60 frames a second. It controls like a dream. Um, it looks really good. I mean, it's as good as you remember, if not better. And the challenge is still all there. It's such a such a challenging game, but there's really no other racing series out there quite like Star Wars Racer in terms of the way the controls work. And um, yeah, highly recommend it. Haven't played this yet, but I got it ready to go when I'm um, ready for it. Star Trek Bridge Crew, one of my favorite PSVR games. Uh, this was super immersive, and I'm not even into Star Trek. I don't really, I've never really ever watched Star Trek, but this game convinced me to actually try watching some Star Trek. I enjoyed it so much, but it's one of those games where you're like, 
you play it online multiplayer and each person kind of has command of a certain point on the bridge uh like you know one person controls movement of the ship one person controls the missiles one person controls the targeting and you got to cooperate together and i had an absolute blast with this game i wish it was more popular and i wish it was better supported after the release don't really remember my time with battlefront too much i think i just remember playing it uh mostly for the VR stuff that they had added in that you can do in this. Uh, or was that Battlefront 2? I don't really remember, but I never really got too into the, the re-releases of the Battlefront games. Haven't played this yet. I recently revisited uh, Racer Revenge, very recently. And this is the third time I've tried to play this game and enjoy it, and I just can't do it. Um, like, I, I respect this game for what it is. It's more of a demolition derby style racing game, more so than a racing game. It's more about the destruction, but I think the destruction elements of this game and the mechanics of how you try and blow up the other pod racers is just kind of meh. I would have preferred if it was more, uh, more of a racing game like the first game, but uh, I respect people's opinions on why they love it more than the original. Steel Rats haven't played this yet. It's a recent download of mine. That's a PS Plus game. This is just a janky little super hang-on Outrun style anime game that was uh, worth the buck I think I paid for it. And that's about it. Super Knight Riders. I don't really re remember my time with Submerged all that much. Um, Strider was a very fun game to get on PS Plus when it first came out. I'd still recommend this even if you have to pay a little bit of money for it. But if you're a fan of Strider action games, uh, check it out. Good movement in that. That's a PS Plus game. Uh, this was a kind of unique little mash together different genres so you can kind of like combo together an RPG with a shoot 'em up and you can combo together a racing game with a Zelda game. So you, whatever you're like, see here, you can, you can essentially, they call it super mash. So you take different genres, you put them together and they'll randomly generate your own genre of game for you. And uh, it's a cute little idea. I think it needed further refinement, but I appreciate the effort in their thoughts behind that game. Uh, Sword of Fortress. This is the jankiest game available on the PS4. One of the jankiest. Essentially, you spawn a mile away. It takes you 10 minutes to run to the one enemy that exists in the start of the game. Um, after you kill him, you, you then have to spend another 10 minutes running to the next enemy in this empty open world and kill him. And eventually it gets to the point where the enemies become unkillable and you just can't finish the game. It's terrible. I've never beat the first enemy. It's one of those ba so bad it's kind of good games in a funny way. But uh, don't waste your money on this. And I don't think any of you will. PS Plus game, Taiko no Tetsujin. Um, yeah, I love the Taiko no Tetsujin games. I got my start on those on the DS versions, which I've always kind of preferred over other versions, and eventually the Wii versions with the drums. Uh, what can I say? Great music rhythm series. Tamarin. Uh, this was a very cute 3D platformer that was... Uh, I always have... Oh, $30. Yeah, don't spend $30 on this game, okay? Despite how good the trailer may look to you. But astounding visuals right i mean this is the 3d platformers of old kind of style that we all know and love right the first two hours is phenomenal i was like what's the hate why is this game getting so much hate this is excellent but then as the game went on and on it started getting really really repetitive and drawn out and uh, there's actually a very interesting sort of jet force gemini aspect to this game where the little tamarin gets guns and there's gunplay to this game like action shooting elements i know it doesn't look like it from this trailer but believe me it's there and the further the game goes on the more repetitive and boring that it gets but um the first couple of hours were extremely strong in, in first impressions but it's a real shame that they couldn't really follow through with the same level of quality throughout the game love that cover though really nice looking this is another very janky 3d platformer um do not recommend this in the slightest the five covens you play as a witch you just platform around collect stuff it's uh it's pretty terrible it was one of those games where it was like so terrible i couldn't really couldn't really have a good laugh out of it either it's just a very mundane 3d platformer so let me waste my money on these for you and you know save you your money that's for sure one of those kind of games Evil Within, that was fine. Um, I, I really don't... My memories on it are a little vague. I, I uh, remember appreciating um, the sort of old-school horror vibe to it, but it wasn't one of my favorite horror games that I played when it came out. Skyrim VR. Loved Skyrim VR. I got super immersed into this, too. I remember having a lot of fun with a bow and arrow. Normally, I wouldn't play a range class in Skyrim, but I definitely did it in the VR version and had a lot of fun with it. I'm not the biggest fan of Tetris because, well, I'm not that good at Tetris. I never really played it too much when I was younger. However, Tetris Effect is 
an amazing experience to play, especially if you're doing the VR version. Um, the soundtrack is excellent. I mean, this is a game from Tetsuya Mizuguchi, so you know exactly what you're getting into here. Creator of Res. Team Sonic Racing. Had a lot of fun with this. I did feel like it was a little too slow in the movement department for, for quite a long time. Um, I much prefer the original Sonic All-Stars Racing over this. However, the tracks were very fun. The music was phenomenal as always. Very colorful game. Very nice to look at and play. The controls were quite good, but I just felt like the pace and the movement was just a little too slow for my liking. The Last Dead End. Terrible, janky horror game. Another one of those games where it's like so bad, it's not really all that good. The voice acting is done with like... A bot talking to you thing if I remember right like the voice acting is terrible um, yeah if you're looking to have a laugh with friends on an evening in October or something maybe this is one maybe worth checking out but uh, yeah don't recommend it last guardian uh, highly 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 dislike this game unfortunately after the near decade long wait and oh, no, I'm just kidding I love last guardian it was worth the wait and then some I can't praise last guardian enough it was um, Everything I could have hoped for, and then some. They absolutely delivered on it, and I've been meaning to play the game on my PS5 again to experience it in the best way possible. Love Last Guardian, and uh, I'll be playing it for years to come. The Night Journey. This is a really weird indie game. Um, so this trailer here, believe it or not, is actual gameplay from this game, and it sort of uses this weird like camera-type view. The, the way that the game moves makes you feel like you're looking through like a VHS, like black and white VHS player or something. And you're kind of just floating and exploring this weird, yeah, ex weird, vast, mysterious landscape. I mean, there's summing it up for you in the trailer here quite well. Uh, and this is gameplay, by the way. This is what the game looks like in motion. So if you're a fan of these really ghostly looking visuals, you might want to check this one out. Um, it's not a very good game, but it's very experimental, I guess, is the best way of saying it. Um, the Quiet. Oh, boy. The Quiet Man. I don't want to go on too much about this one, um, but I will just say, in a nutshell, I enjoyed Quiet Man way more than most people because I streamed this game for the launch when you can only play the game without audio and then came back to it a week later when they had the update with audio. So I experienced it without audio and then experienced it with audio. Um, and had a lot of fun kind of interpreting with my chat kind of like where the story was going. And I kind of like the janky beat em up gameplay, not going to lie. Uh, it was certainly a very experimental beat em up game where if you didn't know what this game is, the first time you play through it, all of the dialogue is not there. You can't hear anything in terms of people, what people are saying because you play as someone that is deaf. And then the next time that you play through it, uh, there is audio so you can hear everything. But when the game first came out, nobody knew that there was going to be an audio version that was released a week later. So it was kind of this nice surprise to interpret the story and then see what the actual story was about. So a very funny, weird, not fully finished game that I did kind of actually enjoy a bit. Thumper, um, excellent game in VR, music rhythm, dark horror type look and theme to it. Highly recommended. Haven't played that. This is another terrible, terrible first person horror game, The Unknown City. Uh, just one of those Pete Dore kind of games that I play because it's so bad and trying to have a good laugh out of it. <laughs> the Unicorn Princess. Oh boy. Oop, I didn't mean to follow it. Ah, whatever. We'll, we'll follow the Unicorn Princess. Uh, this is another one of those games that I just picked up to have a good laugh with my, with my audience on stream. And boy, did we have some good laughs with this one. We had some good clips out of this. Uh, essentially, you just play as a girl that rides around on a unicorn doing daily mundane tasks such as pulling a bug, uh, like a carriage with barrels in the back of it for like delivering supplies and jumping over obstacles and yeah it's it's a, it's a game for little girls but uh <laughs> we had a good time with it i actually have the physical version of that too because I, I think it might be actually kind of rare in the future technomancer i wasn't able to finish this because the game kind of glitched out on me and i wasn't able to progress but if you're a fan of open world um euro style uh rpgs and you know you're kind of um, you've exhausted your list of open world, third person, fantasy, sci-fi RPGs to check out. Tech Technomancer may be worth your time. Haven't played that. Titanfall 2, all ready to go to check out that campaign. Uh, Toe Jam and Earl, this is the remastered version. Really enjoyed this, actually really liked the visual styles that they did with the sort of cut out, hand drawn visual style of this. I thought it was a very faithful recreation of Toe Jam and Earl for a new generation. Had a lot of fun with that for the opening night or two at the online. This here, 
super high recommendation for this version of Toki. I have never played Toki before. This is my first time playing Toki, and the visuals in this are so good. It reminds me of the Wonder Boy remake, right? Like, look at these. Look at these visuals. It looks so good in motion, the hand-drawn animation style. Super challenging game, but if you're a fan of the original Toki and you didn't know this was a thing, absolutely check that out. Another high recommendation for me, if you're a fan of artsy-fartsy eco-like games, uh, this is Torin. It is very unrefined. The movement in the combat is uh, not very good, but the, the overall setting and the atmosphere has a sort of nice pastel, uh, otherworldly kind of feel to it. Definitely worth experiencing if you're into these sort of um, minimalistic storytelling action adventure games. Haven't played that. Troll and I, uh, this, is, this is a game that is universally slammed. Uh, however, if you kind of embrace it for the terrible game that it is and you have some fun with it, heck, I even started going out of bounds in this game and glitching it out to try and have some fun with, uh, you know, playing the game in un unintended ways. Um, it's, it's a good game to have a laugh at. It's not a good game to try and take super seriously, but if you're playing this in a stream setting or, you know, you're just like a fan, you're a fan of bad games, uh, this is one of those games where it is so bad it can kind of be good, right? You can have a good laugh out of it. It's sort of a PS2, PS3 era game, uh, in, on the PS4. It's, um, it's a very cheap game, worth a shot, see if you can get a good laugh out of it. Only played the, the demo of Trials of Mana, been meaning to get back to that because it was visually very, um, pleasing. Looking forward to checking it out at some point. Haven't played Devastation yet. Uh, tried just a demo of Two Point Hospital. Had a lot of fun. Very reminiscent for me of the original theme hospital, which is very nice. This is a very Tidwagver Nymond. What a name, huh? This is a experimental first-person platformer game. Uh, a little long for my liking, but the visuals are very trippy, very surreal. If you're into puzzle, not puzzle, but if you're into first-person platformers like you know, not like Mirror's Edge style, it's very unrefined in terms of those kind of mechanics. With very, very light puzzle solving, uh, check this game out. I think it's also maybe available on PC for a lot cheaper. Haven't played that, that's a PS Plus game. Uncharted 4, amazing way to send off the series, uh, the Nathan J Drake series. Uh, had a ton of fun with this. I actually played Uncharted 4, believe it or not, melee only. So never shooting a gun, I went through the entire game stealth and melee only. That was very difficult, but oh my goodness, did I did I love uh, attempting to do that on my playthrough of Uncharted 4. And guess what? I did the same thing with Uncharted The Lost Legacy. It was just a personal challenge. Uncharted, one of my favorite series of all time, and um, you know, one of the few series that I will absolutely buy anything that they release for the series. You know, it's a third-person shooting series, and I don't really typically play too many of these these days, but Uncharted I will fully always support. And I also did the same thing for Lost Legacy, and they really refined the stealth elements of this game and the melee elements in Uncharted Lost Legacy. And oh my word, was that so much fun to play through this game like that. Uh, if you're looking for a new refreshing way to play Uncharted Lost Legacy or Uncharted 4, try th going through the game without ever firing a gun. Okay, trust me, it's a lot of fun. PS Plus, this is a very fun PSVR game, Rush of Blood Until Dawn. Uh, very creepy, very atmospheric, very immersive. And there's Until Dawn. Uh, never actually finished it. I've been meaning to go back to it one of these Octobers. People keep requesting this one, so maybe sooner rather than later. But that was a lot of fun based on what I played. Very scary. Uh, let's take one more sip of water as we're drawing towards the end here I see on the list. Shoutouts, by the way, to those of you that have made it this far into the video. Uh, you're the real troopers. Thank you. <laughs> really appreciate you watching this long. Unravel. Really fun uh, platformer. 2D platformer. Side-scrolling, at least. Uh, haven't played the sequel yet, but uh, really love the visuals and the mechanics of this. It's just a cute little thing where you play as Yarny and you get a grapple, which is also, you know, your yarn. You kind of unravel yourself, as the name of the game would entail. Very fun. Very, very cutesy. Really well-made game. Undertale, I actually played this for the first time earlier this year, I believe. Uh, late last year, I can't remember the timing on it. But yeah, I played Undertale for the first time. I did one playthrough. I did the... Uh, it wasn't pacifist. It was like the ending in between where I did kill a couple of things. And, uh, you know, because I went in not really knowing what to expect. And I got sort of like the not good but not the bad ending. I don't remember what they call it. And one of these days I'd like to go back and try and get more endings, but I really enjoyed my time with it. I can see the hype around this game. Um, I don't really look into the lore and like the history on the different sides of the fence that certain fans are on with this, but hey, I enjoyed it. Valley, huge, 
recommendation. If you're unaware of Valley, this is a fantastic first person platforming adventure game. Okay, I'm going to actually let the trailer play here because hopefully seeing this game in motion is essential to seeing what makes it so appealing. Um, so this game you play as somebody with sort of like augmented legs that lets them run really fast and jump really high. So there's a big emphasis on moving fast and jumping very high and that plays into the platforming. I think it does kind of falter in the mid game where it goes kind of story and lore oriented and kind of slows down for a bit. But oh my word, what a what a fun game this was. The sense of speed, which this trailer is definitely not conveying right now. I hope they show you a little bit of that. The sense of speed was overwhelming yeah see these jumps you do these really wide jumps across these gaps and it's sort of like got this almost like you're an olympic sprinter right like oh and i forgot it has these powers where you can uh interact with stuff in the world like that using whatever the heck it was i don't remember the i don't remember the story fully but yeah look at these jumps look how far you can glide and jump it's sort of like a more floaty uh oh it has a grapple yeah 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 oh man i'm reliving this game again and it's bringing back some memories um, of having so much fun with this but the sense of movement in this is fantastic so definitely check out valley uh Another, oh man, so many recommendations. I wish these were higher up in the list, right? Because not everybody's going to make it this far into the video. If, take my word for this, okay? This is a one of the most underrated artsy-fartsy games to come out in the last five years. Um, I don't even remember the release date on this. But if you are a fan of Eco, if you're a fan of Shadow of the Colossus, if you're a fan of uh, Abzu, if you're a fan of anything in those vein of games... Uh, <laughs> Okay, right, maybe pun intended there. Um, you need to check out Vane, okay? This game was phenomenal for me. The visuals were like, unlike anything I had seen before in this genre, it sort of has this really, um, I don't even know how you would describe it at times. I don't know if they're going to show it in the trailer, but it's got this very um, stop motion-y, psychedelic look to it at times. The world, as you can see here, kind of builds itself as you move through it almost like in stop motion style, right? And it looks unlike anything else I've ever seen. The main mechanic here is that you play as a little boy that can transform into a crow and you can explore the environments that way. Um, and it's very dark, very mysterious, very hard to interpret this game. And um, wow, just what a game, okay? If you're going to take away one game on this list and you know the kind of games that I'm into, and you kind of relate to the kind of games that I like, because you kind of tend to like the same kind of games I do, and you are not aware of this game, and you haven't played Vane, it's not perfect, you know, obviously it's got some, it's got some issues in um, the gameplay area, because it's not fully refined, it's got a little bit of glitchiness to it, but oh my goodness, just play Vane, okay, trust me, give it a try. VR carts. I actually played this online. Uh, it's a carting game in VR. One of the rarest PSVR games, actually, and I do have it physically. I picked this up when it was kind of brand new. Had a lot of fun with it. Threw my neck out because what I was doing online was I was looking behind me like this to like check to before I like let a banana peel equivalent like behind me to hit a, another player, and I definitely threw my neck out doing that too much. You got to be careful with these VR games. This is an interesting one. I think some people might actually like this recommendation. If you're a fan of Advance Wars, this is essentially Advance Wars with mechs. Uh, this is Warborn. This is a release that came out not too long ago, actually. It's got an anime style to it. Um, it's not the world's best kind of tactical action uh, strategy game, but you can kind of see what you're getting into here. It gets a little repetitive. It doesn't really do as much as you would hope to kind of keep your attention in the long term. I played this for like two hours. Um had some fun with it, but if you're a fan of these types of games and kind of like taking over bases and the sort of tactical Advance Wars style combat, it's worth looking into. Oh, let's see what we got here. <laughs> War Dogs. This is, yeah, this is another one of those weird janky games. It's a port of a mobile game. I didn't know that before I bought it, but yeah, don't bother with that one. It's terrible. This was a PS Plus game, I think. It doesn't show the logo. I don't remember buying that. Uh, this is the PS4 version of Wild Arms 3. And, um,. This was a very nice, re, you know, nice remaster of the game for PS4 that looks great in cell shading. I never ever finished Wild Arms 3 because it is a pretty long game, but um, I do enjoy the game. This is probably my favorite PSVR game. This is Werewolves Within, and if you have the ability, there's still a dedicated player base for this game. I can't view the product, so no. It has a dedicated viewer base for this game where uh, they still get together occasionally to play it. But it's one of those sort of like Among Us style games, except in this case you sit around, this came before Among Us obviously, but you sit around a campfire and uh, there's one or more people that are werewolves and you need to try and deduct using your powers with the other villagers who are the werewolves. And uh, that's, you know, lies and deception. And if you're really good at that kind of stuff, you'll have a lot of fun with this game. I had an absolute blast with werewolves in it. 
uh, Wadham. This is from a uh, creator of Katamari Damasi. And it's another high recommendation from me if you're into these kind of weird, weird games, okay? Uh, check out Wadham. I beat this in one night. It's a game you can definitely beat in a weekend for sure. And it's got this sort of like... It, it, it kind of ties into Katamari where the, the world starts in a very contained little uh, small section and it grows in its scope and scale over the course of the game. So it kind of plays into that Katamari Damashi style of gameplay. But um, yeah, just a very fun game to kind of chill out in and interact with all the weird characters and uh, just have some fun, right? It's a very experimental toy box style game that is absolutely worth playing if you haven't played it yet. Warframe, this is just something that I picked up, you know, downloaded with the launch of the PS4 like everybody did. Never would have imagined this game would still be living and breathing and thriving until this day. Xenon Racer, this is a fairly uncommon game um, physically. Uh, I can't show you the storefront, but this is essentially like a futuristic Ridge Racer game with uh, increased difficulty. The drifting is quite difficult. There's co uh, combat damage, so you can take damage and kind of your car will blow up. So if you're into arcade style futuristic racing games with a uh, very high difficulty curve, but you know, you can definitely get really good at it. Check out Xenon Racer. It's a PS Plus game, Yakuza 0. Still really one of the only Yakuza games outside of Like a Dragon that I've ever really tried. I never really got into the Yakuza series. Um, and this is one of the only ones that I've really tried. I enjoyed it, but it's just for what I do for streaming. It's really hard to stream these games because they're very long and they take a long time to beat. And uh, that's just not the kind of content that I do on my streams. So that's kind of the main reason why I don't really play them. Ukulele, ultimately a little disappointed with this in the end. I think it's still a fine little 3D platformer, but what I was hoping to get from it in terms of that feel of hoping for that spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie, um, I don't think it completely delivered on because some of the levels were just a little too lacking uh, personality, I felt, and I think the game tried a little too hard to break up the 3D platformer genre with, like, mini games, and I felt like I wasn't doing enough platforming at times. It was just, like, too much mini game after mini game after mini game. I just wanted pure collectathon jumping around and platforming, and Ukulele, I don't know, just kind of missed the mark with me. Not a bad game, not as good as I was hoping it would be. And lastly, here we got Zombie. This is the port of the Wii U game Zombie, which, um, you know, Obviously, the, the Wii U version kind of considered to be the definitive version that you might want to play because while well, the gamepad and looking down at the gamepad to check your inventory was kind of part of the experience, but I had a really good time with Zombie. I played this one many years ago, and I could actually kind of see myself coming back to this one pretty soon, coming up one of these Octobers to check it out again. But uh, I highly recommend Zombie. If you've actually never played this before, this is a very immersive uh, roguelite style first-person horror game. Uh, so if you're a fan of zombie games that have sort of like a semi-permadeath mechanic, not completely permadeath, but like, you know, the edge of your seat, like, I don't want to die because I don't want to lose all my stuff kind of game. Uh, it's a very creepy game. It, it really rewards exploration and kind of checking out all the nooks and crannies, you know, like finding... Um, finding like a vent or something like hidden behind a desk that you can move the desk and like get in the vent and get some supplies it really rewards you for exploring and looking for all kinds of hidden shortcuts with items for supplies um, it's pretty good so anyway guys that is apparently the list of all of my games that i have on my ps4 now granted yes i do have physical games that are not on here because i haven't either popped them into my system yet or haven't played them yet but let's let's be real here do you really care about the games that I own that I that I haven't played yet? There's not much I can say about them, so uh, no big deal that they're left out of the video. I'd probably say I don't know, I don't know how many physical PS4 games I have laying around in PS5. This I mean I have the Pathless on PS5 physical I haven't played yet. I got a handful of PS4 games physically that I haven't popped in yet, but no big deal, right? You want to hear my impressions on these games, so being able to show you the digital storefront here uh, hopefully was pretty insightful, and hopefully you got some good recommendations. So that's gonna do it. This was near almost two hours long, boy. Um, it's kind of good to be back just kind of talking about uh, a collection of one of my consoles, so hopefully you enjoyed. As always, if you enjoyed the video, you know, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more styles of videos like this, maybe I can do one for, you know, the uh, the Xbox One at some point, or uh, the, the Wii U, or the Switch at some point, you know. Maybe if people seem to like this style of going through game libraries, maybe that's the way to go. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, non-stop talking for two hours boy i gotta take a gotta take a water break anyway hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching